Our story today is about a rich man and what the Lord teaches this rich man about money and other wealth. And behold, one coming said to Jesus, Good teacher, what good shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said to them, Why callest thou me good? No one is good except one God. But if thou wilt enter into the life, keep the commandments. And the rich man said to him, Which? And Jesus said this, That thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man says to him, All these things I have guarded from my youth. In what am I yet lacking? Jesus said to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go, sell which thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard the word, he went away sorrowing, for he had many possessions. Amen. So a rich young man comes to the Lord and asks him, how do I have eternal life? Now, eternal life. How do I have eternal life? How do I go to heaven? He's asking the Lord, how can I be happy and joyful forever and ever? And the Lord gives him a very simple answer. Keep the commandments. And the young man, wanting to know which commandments, the Lord says, Thou shalt not murder, commit adultery, steal, bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now we can see how these commandments would help you have eternal life or go to heaven. Think about what heaven's like. In heaven... Nobody steals or commits adultery or murders or lies. People honor their father and their mother. They honor their heavenly father, the Lord, and their mother, the church. And they love each other. That's what makes heaven so wonderful. They love each other. It's through those other commandments is the means by which they love each other. The way they love the neighbor is by shunning murder, adultery, theft, and lying. That's how they're going to have eternal life. Now this is a young man who's been doing all these things all his life. He has been shunning murder, adultery, theft, and lying. He honors his parents, and he tries to love the neighbor. So he says to the Lord, I have done all these things. But remember, He is a rich man. So has he done enough? And the Lord says, well, if you want to be perfect, or if you want to finish the job, complete your journey to heaven, one more thing. Go and give everything you have to the poor. And then follow me. And the rich man is very rich. Think about that. He has a lot of stuff. You can think about all the things that you have, that you might love. You might have a game that you really like. You might have a dress that you particularly love. You might have a stuffed animal or a dolly. You might have the pride of being able to do good things. You think, I'm good at this. I'm good at that. You have the things about you that you really like. Maybe you like the way you look. You have a lot of riches. These are natural riches. And the Lord says, go and give it to the poor. Now this rich young man is probably wealthy in more of an ancient world way. He probably has a lot of sheep and goats, maybe a lot of land. He might have a lot of rich clothes. He might have servants. 
a mansion or two. These are the kinds of things that this man might have. He might have gold and silver and jewels. And the Lord has told him to go and give it all to the poor. And the man walks away from the Lord very sad because he has so much. Now we need to ask ourselves something. The man walks away sad. Why is he so sad? He now has a choice. His choice is he can either have eternal life and give everything to the poor or keep all his stuff and not have eternal life. So he's sad because he doesn't like the choice. But he doesn't have to be sad. He could choose the right way. Because think about it. Eternal life, heaven, is not sad. It's joyful. It's happy. If he chooses right and gives all he has to the poor, he will have eternal joy. He doesn't need to be sad. But he's worried about it. Now, We know from elsewhere in the Word that angels in heaven appear arrayed in riches. Some of them live in mansions. Some of them have beautiful dresses and jewels. They know a lot of truth. Angels in heaven appear rich. We also know that it's okay to have money and useful good things. It's good to have a warm winter coat when it's cold outside. It's good to have a nice car that will take you to work and take you to church and school and chores. It's nice and good to have a house to keep your family warm. These are material things. They're good and useful. The Lord is talking to the rich man and gives him a special commandment that's special for him. And he might be giving the same to you. The issue isn't whether or not you have nice things. The issue is, do you love them? Do you love them? Now think a moment about love. Love is a wonderful thing. When you give someone that you love a hug, they can give you a hug back. If you give them a gift, They can say thank you. They can smile. They can fill you with joy at how happy they are. Love is an amazing thing. Because when you express love, you can receive joy in return, both from the Lord and the person you're loving. They can give you something back. Just from a selfish standpoint, loving people is really useful to yourself. Love also has another amazing property. Another amazing thing that love does. If you have a room full of ten people and they all love each other, then not only are they each of them becoming happier themselves, they're making each other happy. They end up being so much more happy for loving each other than if they only loved themselves. Think instead of loving people, somebody loves things. They love the toys they have. They love the clothes they have. They love their car or their house. They love their stuff. Now, as lovely as a stuffy is, if you give it a hug, it does not hug you back. If you give a gift to your car, it doesn't really express joy. If you give your stuff your love, it will not love you back. Loving material things is a dead-end activity. And it leads to no eternal life. It is dead. Love people. Don't love things. Loving things 
is like lev- loving dead junk. It will serve you no good and it will not lead to the eternal life. So when the man was told by the Lord, go and sell all your things, it's because the Lord knew something about that rich man. Not merely that he was rich, but that he loved his riches. And if you love your riches, you will need to sell all you have and give it to others. So do not love things. Do not treasure up for yourselves things on earth where moth and rust destroy. But treasure up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For there the Lord will fill you with everlasting joy. Now, there's one last part of the story. And think about this during our interlude. And so the young man goes away. And Jesus turns to his disciples who are standing there. And he says, Amen, I say to you, that a rich man shall with difficulty enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And when his disciples heard it, they wondered greatly, saying, Who then can be saved? It's so hard for rich people to give up their love of riches. But Jesus, looking at them, said to them, With men this is impossible. Men by themselves cannot stop loving their riches. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. Our final lesson is from the work of Heaven and Hell, number 365. By the rich man of whom the Lord says, it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God, the rich, in both the natural sense and the spiritual sense, are meant. In the natural sense, the rich are those that have an abundance of riches and set their heart upon them. But in the spiritual sense, they are those that have an abundance of knowledges and learning, which are spiritual riches, and who desire by means of these to introduce themselves into the things of heaven and the church from their own intelligence. And because this is contrary to divine order, it is said to be easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye A camel signifying in general, in the spiritual sense, the knowing faculty and things known. And a needle's eye signifying spiritual truth. Amen. We're about to discuss the spiritual sense of what it means for a rich man to give all he has to the poor. It's worth remembering, though, that the Lord still means it literally in that you should not love riches. Stuff. But now, let us turn to the spiritual sense. Riches are all the things you know. Think about how spiritually wealthy you are. How many truths you have gathered up. If you've been in one of these classes over the the last few weeks, think about all the riches you have gathered in. How many spiritual truths you learn, whether in school, in doctrinal class, here at church, or in your own reading. You learn so much. The Lord is telling us that not only do we have to use these truths to love the neighbor and shun evil, we have to do it from Him. From the Lord. Listen to what it says again in heaven and hell. In the spiritual sense, those who have an abundance of knowledge, but desire by means of these to introduce themselves into the things of heaven in the church from their own intelligence. So in other words, They gather up truths and they think, 
I have these truths. They're mine. I know them. Now that I know enough, I am going to get myself to heaven. That will not work. You cannot get yourself to heaven. Ever. Only the Lord can bring you into heaven. We need to acknowledge the Lord. A camel signifies intelligence, knowledge, and understanding. The knowing ability. And an eye of the needle signifies a spiritual truth. We need the Lord for knowledge to become spiritual truth. To understand this, think about what spiritual truth is. Spiritual truth are those truths that lead us to loving the neighbor. Knowledge cannot become spiritual truth unless we see where it is from. If we see that it is from the Lord. Think about the truth, thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder could be merely a natural truth if you don't acknowledge the Lord. You could think it's a good moral idea for civil society to have peace where nobody kills each other, where we don't hit each other or steal or cheat or lie. That's how we're going to have a good civil society. Now, on a natural level, yes, you need those things to have a good civil society. But that's all it is, is a good civil society. In order for it to lead you to heaven, you need to acknowledge that these commandments are from God. Think about thou shalt not murder. Why is it a sin? It is a sin to murder not just because the Lord said so, but because it hurts people. It causes injury to people. People, your neighbor, are the ones that we are to love. All these commandments look towards love. But if we do not acknowledge God, then the neighbor, people, are merely things. Think about that further. It is common in the world, sadly, for people to be treated like objects. For people to be counted and numbered, to be a means towards an end. For people to be something to be nudged or pushed around. Something to be manipulated for a greater end. There is no greater end than the Lord's kingdom, which is comprised of people, individuals, who are filled with the Lord's life and love. They are the end of creation. A heaven from the human race. The end of creation is not an ideal separated from reality. It is real people. When we take the Lord out of the equation, when we take the Lord out of the commandments, out of truth. We make laws merely natural. We make people having no inherent value. The reason why people have inherent value is because the Lord loves them and gives them value. And without an acknowledgement of the Lord, people become just another animal. A terrible, horrible thing. With man, nothing is possible. But with God, all things are possible. Without the Lord, we cannot truly love the neighbor. Because then the neighbor becomes merely a means to the end. So pray to the Lord that in your repentance, he might reform your mind and give new life to your soul. Amen. Lord, as we seek to live a life of repentance, help us. Help us to remember that without you we can do nothing, but with you we can do all. 
But many who are first shall be last, and the last first. Amen. Yes, I come quickly. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.